Okay, we've created our guide video to send out to all our participants. I'm going to switch roles now and play the part of the participant. I'm going to record my part four times using my iPad. Uh, your participants are going to use whatever devices they have on hand, whether it be a phone or an iPad or a computer. Maybe they'll have a Zoom recorder, whatever. Um, so I'm going to probably speed up this video uh, as I do the recording four times. And uh, let's just call up our guide video. Hold on. <clears throat> Where is our guide video? It's in lecture and Dono guide. Fantastic. Let's just see if this is. Nope, that's the wrong one. Hold on. Here we are. This has our audio sync point, so I'm, you're going to see me clap along with this recording, and uh, then I'm off. All right, let's start the time lapse. Here we go. Okay, so I've gone through and recorded myself four times as the participant. Uh, I talked right before this about uh, changing aspect or changing resolution and keeping the aspect ratio. So let's do that now. We're going to receive all sorts of different files from our participants. Depending on their type of device, we're going to get a whole bunch of different types of video files and resolutions of video files. We want to standardize them. So. Here we are, have my four files. I'm going to bring them into UniConverter, which is a cross-platform uh, converter. You can use it on Mac or PC. Uh, it does co cost a little bit of money, but I've found it to be really, really useful. It saves me a ton of time. So um, we drag those in. <clears throat> and I was talking before about aspect ratio, how 1080p or 720p has a 16 by 9 uh, aspect ra ratio. So I've created a custom MOV file. I like to work with MOV files. And I've created a 480 by 270 uh, uh, resolution, keeping that same 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So that's going to result in a 68.6 .6 megabyte file coming down to 6.6 .6 megabytes. That is tiny. That's wonderful. So let's change that to come out at the same source folder. And let's just quickly convert all those. This shouldn't take very much time at all. Wonderful. And so what we're going to do next is trim our videos to the very start of that clap. We're going to see it and be able to trim them down. And let's get started on that right now as those others are converting. I double click to open up QuickTime. And there's actually a really cool tool in here. If you go Command-T, it is a trim tool. And we can find our clap point. So I'm just going to come up to it. And then I'm going to pause for a second. It's going to zoom in. And then I can, fantastic. That's about right. And we go Trim. And we go Save. And let's, uh, which file was that? That would be handy to know. I'll say file one. Great. Okay, we have file one, which was 20. Okay, let's do that with the rest. And I can fast forward through this. Here we go. Okay, we've uh, trimmed all of those files uh, so that the start of each file is the clap point. That is great. Let's just take a peek at that. We have a, a slap, a slap, a slap, and another slap. Fantastic. OK, let's look at those different resolutions. We open up that last video, and it looks small. We open up the original, how it was. Hold on. I'm opening it up with a different program. We open it up 
with QuickTime. So this is the difference between that tiny resolution and this, hold on. Let's see if we can find, it. that's roughly the same timing. Okay, so the difference between these, if I was to blow this up, which I will do, you're gonna see that once we blow it up, yeah, the resolution is certainly less than this and it gets blurry as we get bigger. So that's something important to realize when you're downsampling video, yeah, it's not gonna look that great if you're close up to it, but down here, this sort of size in a mosaic, that's gonna look just fine. So um, choose your poison. Uh, you can downsample and be able to handle many, many videos as you're editing and as you're edit rendering, or you can keep them large and it might choke your system, but uh, it's something for you to try out on your system and see if you can make it work. Beautiful. So where to go from here? We have them trimmed very, very well. Um, I would bring them into DaVinci. DaVinci Resolve, again, is a really great um, video editor. So let's set up a simple mosaic. And thankfully, now that we've trimmed it, um, when we split out the audio separately from the file, it's gonna start at that same clap point. The videos are all gonna start at the clap point. So that's great. Let's call this Bohemian Rhapsody. <clears throat> Fantastic, here we are in DaVinci. We bring in our first file. We change our project to match the video. We bring in our second video. We bring in our third video. And we bring in our fourth video. Now, I like to show audio envelopes so I can see some of the audio that's happening. Good, and we see at the front of this, this file, we see a little spike. That's the clap. So we're gonna go through and just fine tune this. We're gonna line up all of these four clicks. If it's slightly off, it doesn't really matter. Good, that's gonna work fine. Let's hear that all together. Wonderful, okay. Uh, before we play this through, I want to make myself a little mosaic. So let's change the scale of each of these videos to be half size, and that's gonna result in a halving of its width and its height. So we're gonna be able to fit four videos on, on screen. With this sort of um, portrait mode uh, that we've shot it in, we could fit far more than that. So we, we could do that. Let's just do four videos right now. So we change the zoom of this to 50% and we can't see it because it's hidden by the other videos. Let's move out to the final covering video. Change that zoom to 50%. There it is, fantastic. Let's change its position. We can just drag this value over here and let's move that over to the side. Great. We do the same with this next video, the next one in the row. Let's bring that down and we bring it over. Zoop. Wonderful. Let's go to the next video, change it to 50%. Now, uh, you could figure out the exact values that you need for position X and position Y. Uh, you'll do some math to, to figure out the, the quarter point and the halfway point of your width and your height. You, so you can, you can actually calculate that and be more precise than I'm being right now. Um, good, and we have a little mosaic. Let's, um, let's make this a little more artful. And 
sometimes it's helpful to mute the video just to see which one we're looking at. Let's move this over and make a little, oh, that doesn't quite work because we have some black space in our rendered out video. Good, that's gonna work just fine. That looks nice for now. And let's hear what we've got. So we've lined up the clap. Let's see if the audio does its work and we are all lined up. Let's play. And I will change to cinema mode. Here we go. <coughs> Wonderful. Okay, so that works really well. Uh, there are some timing issues, depending on the number of players that you have, it, it'll blend. Uh, you can uh, adjust the fine tuning or the fine timing of each one of these video files. I'm going to show you a little bit later how to flex time uh, within a file without affecting the whole chunk and moving the whole chunk around. We just choose a single note and move it and correct it. So that is a really cool thing about Logic Pro X. Uh, I believe that function is available also in Reaper. So uh, that's something. I like to treat the video separately from the audio. So we can line up this video. We can save it for later. Uh, we're going to mute this audio and deal with the audio separately, bringing in a rendered track into our video and that's our final step. Wonderful. So watching this video uh, should bring to mind some potential pitfalls. You notice that my bowing was all different. Uh, it, it can be useful to make sure your parts are bowed and prepared before you send them out. Um, and yeah, uh, let's go on to the next lesson, which is using Filmora instead of uh, DaVinci. We're gonna create a mosaic within Filmora. Fantastic. Some of that layout stuff in DaVinci